am Calypso, and I thank you for playing Twisted Metal. Before the rise of the console FPS turned gaming into a marketing device to sell liquid sugar, there was another group of shooters that managed to dominate the 90s console market. Known for their speed, strategy, skill, the car combat genre included multiple highly successful franchises that are fondly remembered by many who gamed in the 90s and early 2000s. So what happened? How did these derby deathmatch games come to be, and why aren't they made anymore? Well, for that, we're going to have to go to the year 1994. Meet David Jaffe, a man who had been working at Sony for some time at this point, had finally gotten the chance of a lifetime to be the lead designer for a video game, one that would launch on Sony's new console, the PlayStation. After multiple failed attempts, Sony gave Jaffe one last chance, and things weren't looking good. Jaffe and the rest of the development team for their company, Single Track, were on their way back from a meeting where they had failed to think of a concept for their new game. To make matters worse, they were stuck in traffic. A few people on the development team, in frustration, started fantasizing about being able to blow away the traffic in front of them with guns and missiles. From there, the idea of car combat was born. Released in 1995, the Twisted Metal series was a sudden and unexpected hit, but in retrospect, I think it's easy to see why. Twisted Metal, along with the genre it spawned, had all the thrill and speed of a racing game, but played similar to a classic arena shooter with creative guns, violence, and a map design focused on collecting health and ammo pickups to get an advantage over your enemy. With shooters still a few years away from taking off on consoles, Car Combat was able to fill an empty niche. And to this day, I still think it's a far better fit than the dumbed-down shooters that would later dominate the console market. Think about it. Combat, and car combat, was more about handling your vehicle well than it was about pure aiming. Most people would agree that a controller or driving wheel if you had the money for one feels a lot more natural for controlling a vehicle with compared to using keys on a keyboard. The weapons and movement in these games play to this strength, so timing your shots, getting behind and chasing your enemies, or swerving out of the way of fire was how you won a firefight. Compare this to later console shooters where they had to use massive auto-aim slow down gunplay, and put in cover mechanics with their generating health just to make shooters sort of viable on a controller. Yet even with all these concessions made, a mouse and keyboard is still objectively better at aiming with. And when I say objectively better, I mean it. There's a reason when given the option, all competitive players opt to use a mouse and keyboard when playing at any FPS tournament. But since at this point I'm just making myself get angry, let's move on. With Twisted Metal being a massive success and spawning a wave of sequels, including Twisted Metal 2, the game I'm proud to say was the first video game three-year-old me ever played, the series was bound to get a few copiers, like the Vigilante 8 series for example. While Twisted Metal, predictably, had a metal theme going for it, especially 4 on account of the game letting you play as Rob Zombie to the tune of Dragula, yeah, the, the Vigilante 8 series was disco-themed. <laughs> Like Twisted Metal, it too was both critically and financially successful, spawning itself a sequel that was even better than the original. Eventually, even the PC got to see some car combat action with multiple series including the classic Carmageddon. Besides the fast and frantic gameplay, I think one reason for the success of these series was their violent and edgy themes and fun characters. In most of these games, each car had its own driver, with its own story. Killer clowns, aliens, and other bizarre beings became a staple of these series, with fan favorites becoming reoccurring characters. This also acted as a motivator to continue playing, because the payoff for beating these games would often be getting to see what happened to your driver. Twisted Metal, for example, was a bit infamous for killing the player character off after beating the game. That's strange. It tastes like... As time went on, the genre fine-tuned itself, improved, and continued to gain fans. After the 90s made way to the 2000s and old consoles got replaced by new, things, at first, seemed to be going pretty good for the genre. During the turn of the century, the Vigilante 8 series released its sequel, Second Defense, and ported it to the newest console on the block, the Sega Dreamcast. Carmageddon, by the end of 2000, had two sequels, while Twisted Metal had both Black and Small Brawl released in 2001, having the series go through both its edgy and kid-friendly phases at the same time. 
Black even managed to sell nearly a million units, and was praised by critics. Sadly, things didn't stay this way for long though. As you may know, 2001 was the year another game released. I don't think I really have to explain how big Halo was. Sure, these days a new Halo release isn't earth shattering, especially with the shooter genre having gone through multiple different fads since then, but in the early 2000s, Halo basically represented video games to many console gamers. While Halo definitely wasn't the first first person shooter on consoles, nothing else was really as popular. By doing things like adding in aim assist, reducing the number of available weapons to only two, adding in regenerating shields, and by using the two sticks made available by the Xbox controller for aiming and movement, Halo was able to finally get first person shooters to be sort of playable on consoles. Sure, Twisted Metal Black selling a near million units is nothing to scoff at, but compared to Halo's 5 million, it's clear which direction the industry was going to go. This number is especially impressive when you remember the PS2, the console Twisted Metal Black was exclusive to, sold over 6 times more than its competitor, the Xbox, which at the time was known by many as that console you played Halo on. Despite this, however, Sony did in fact try making a few more Twisted Metal games. After all, it started the car combat genre, and it was still the most popular in that genre. The in-development sequel to Black, called Twisted Metal Harbor, was cancelled before release, however. This would become a reoccurring trend for the series, with two more cancelled games being planned for the PS3. With no new games from the Carmageddon or Vigilante 8 series either, at this point in time you can basically say the car combat genre died after 2001, and stayed that way for some time. Eventually though, Car Combat would see a bit of a resurrection. After 11 years of no Twisted Metal games being released on a home console, fans would finally see a return. This new game, simply called Twisted Metal, released exclusively on the PS3 in 2012. Things weren't perfect however. While the gameplay was fine, actually the best in the series in my opinion, the game was plagued with a horrible netcode, making it nearly impossible to connect to another player online during the first few weeks of launch. Multiple fans were also upset about the game not featuring many of the series' fan-favorite characters. Instead of having a roster of a dozen or more drivers to choose from, this Twisted Metal only allowed you to play from one of three. Overall, the game sold decently, but not enough to revive the series. That same year it was announced there'd be a new Carmageddon game. By asking for donations on Kickstarter, the game was able to raise over half a million dollars for development. Sadly though, like the Twisted Metal reboot, Carmageddon also had a few problems on release, receiving a lukewarm response from fans. So, how are things today? While there aren't any big new upcoming true car combat games being developed these days, the genre isn't completely forgotten. Indie games like Auto Age Standoff have shown that there are at least some people still interested in the genre, for example. 2016 saw an updated and fixed version of Carmageddon release, but it was more of a re-release than a complete new game. And the year before that, fans saw the release of the Mad Max video game. While not strictly a car combat game, it did feature car combat sections as your character traveled around the map. I personally wish they would cut out the very simplistic melee combat system and make the game a complete car combat experience, because that's the part of the game I've actually heard the most praise for. This same development team is working on the sequel to Rage. While I admit I never really cared for the first game, the developers have shown their ability in making fun vehicular combat, so I'll be keeping an eye on Rage too. As for Twisted Metal, the series that started it all, Chaffee himself confirmed that there is no new Twisted Metal game in the works for the PS4. I think the question is sort of how do you work with that IP in a way that makes sense in 2018, you know? This series has just become a part of gaming history, and for the most part, so is its genre. Thanks for watching. This is a new series I've been wanting to make for a while now, where I talk about old genres of video games or cartoons or whatever that just simply aren't made anymore. I mean, in a way, most of my videos are kind of like that, but I figured I could actually do something useful with all this complaining and actually make something a little more structured with it. I know most of my videos don't really get a lot of traffic, but I really do like making them, and one of the major reasons for that is because I just like hearing what other people have to say on the subject. 
It's why I tend to make videos about things other people really don't talk about. So if you want to bring up a point, have a suggestion, or even disagree with my opinion, I'd love to hear about it. If all goes well, you should expect the rate of video production to increase. My goal is to release at least one, hopefully two videos a month. It basically all comes down to me being able to juggle school and work and all those other things people have in life. So until next time, see ya, and hopefully soonish.